So during the summer when there were no sports, Joy and I talked a lot about Michael Jordan's 10-part documentary. Now, Michael Jordan, you could do another 10-part documentary. I'd watch that too. He's a fascinating guy, probably the best basketball player the world's ever had. LeBron, Magic, certainly get arguments. But when Michael did that 10-part documentary, no question, it took Michael's view of the dynasty. But I was there throughout it, and it was a truthful documentary leaning, like all documentaries, on the person who controlled the documentary. Scottie Pippen thought he was minimized in the documentary and therefore now has written a book to avenge those feelings. Scotty's book is not accurate. It's a lot of BS. It's a lot of reaching for stuff that didn't really exist. Yesterday, he was on Dan Patrick's show. He was criticizing Phil Jackson because when Michael left, it was Scotty's team. Remember that? Michael went and played baseball, Scotty's team. And in that first year, they got to the playoffs. They were a very good team, by the way. They were still a very good team, won 55 regular season games. The year before, they won only 57 regular season games and won the title. Uh, and at the end of the, the biggest game of the year, Phil Jackson did not draw the play up for Scottie Pippen. If you knew that Scottie Pippen had been with the Bulls from 87, battled through the Pistons and every other team that we had to get to those three championships, wouldn't you give Scottie Pippen one opportunity to get a last second shot without Michael Jordan? Like one year without Michael Jordan. Can I get one shot? Like I'm doing all the dirty work. Uh, that's BS. They actually drew up two plays for Scottie Pippen, and he missed on both. Therefore, they finally went to this shot. Sorry, radio audience. Tony Kukoc, now that wasn't the shot, but they'd, want, they'd gone throughout that game to Pippen twice. First of all, let's acknowledge this. Kyrie and Kevin Love did not get a lot of credit for the Cavs title. LeBron did. Kareem, John, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Played with Magic on the Showtime Lakers. They're known as Magic Showtime Lakers. And Kareem's the leading scorer in league history. So let's be honest. When you play with a Magic and a Michael and a LeBron, <laughs> you get minimized. They're called Magic Showtime Lakers. Many people believe Kareem's the best player ever if you really go to stats and numbers and longevity and defense and offense and unstoppable. It's Magic Showtime Lakers. Kyrie hit the big shot for the Cavs. It's LeBron's title with the Cavs. That's the reality of it. So Scotty is never going to get the love that he probably deserves because Michael was the best player and the most glamorous and the coolest and had the biggest shoe deal. So that's just the reality of playing with the greatest Batman ever. You get minimized as a Robin. Um, but I covered Scotty for a couple years in Portland. And here's the part that Scotty doesn't want to talk about. Scotty always wanted to be viewed as a one, paid like a one, get all the accessories of a one, the respect of a one. But if he played poorly, he wouldn't be around for the tough questions. That's part of being a one. Availability. Paul George, availability. You want to be a one, you got to be ready to play, ready to talk about failure, Ready, regardless of how you feel the flu game, you got to be there. Scotty, and I've seen this a lot in pro sports. A lot of people want to be seen as a one, talked about as a one, paid as a one, but they don't want to do all the one stuff. And the longer Pippen took control of the Bulls after Michael left, the more he unraveled. And here's another thing that's not talked about when I covered Scotty. The idea that Phil Jackson did not draw a play up for him, that's very interesting. Scotty was never a closer. He was just an incredible player and an incredible athlete. But I covered the best non-final series, I believe, ever. Lakers, Blazers, went seven. That's the iconic Kobe to Shaq slam dunk. I was in behind the basket. I covered that series. Unbelievable. There for every minute of every game. Best series, non-final series I've ever seen. 
So if Phil Jackson is racist, and that was the insinuation for not drawing up a play for Scottie Pippen instead Kukoc, though Phil drew up a couple for Scottie, go to that game seven. Scottie was three for ten. I I thought he's a one. Do you know what he was in the fourth quarter of that game as a blazer for the Blazers against the Lakers? He was 0 for 3 and a minus 17 in the fourth quarter. Mike Dunleavy didn't draw plays for Scottie Pippen because that wasn't what Scottie was. Scottie was a slasher, a hustler, a defender, a great athlete. He's not the guy you drew up plays for. In that Blazer Laker series, go to the fourth quarter. I'm there. They drew him up for Steve Smith. They drew him up for Arvidas. They drew him up for Rashid Wallace. I think six, seven shots. They didn't draw any up for Scotty. Scotty's not the guy. In fact, when you drew a play up for Scotty, it was mostly to soothe his ego, to make sure he felt included, not because he was the best option. He was never the best option for the final shot with the Bulls. It was MJ1. Sometimes it was Kerr. It was Paxson. Uh, sometimes it was Ku Coach. Those are great shooters. Scotty never was. Ron Harper was actually, some could argue, a better, as a reserve, a better pure offensive talent than Scotty. So Michael Jordan's documentary was a Michael-leaning version of the truth. Scotty's book, from what I can tell, sounds like a lot of misremembering. Phil Jackson loves Scotty, but everybody's always understood the term Robin comes from Scotty Pippen. He was not available the minute it was Scotty's team. Michael goes plays baseball. It's Scotty's team. There are people in Chicago that still refer to him as 1.8. 1.8 seconds left. Scotty wouldn't go into a game. Playoff game. Why? Because Phil wouldn't draw the play up for him. 1.8. That that is some of his legacy. So there's a big difference between Michael's documentary, which leans Michael. It's his documentary, right? And Scotty's book, which feels like it was written to avenge him being minimized, which he has a right to do. He's going to make the media rounds. But I just don't feel like I should elevate or extend these Scotty stories, which just aren't true. I was there in Portland. I covered him. Want to be paid like a one, didn't want to really be a one. And there's a lot that comes with that. And some players are simply better served to be Robins. Great Robins. A lot of money in being a Robin. A lot of fame in being a Robin. Really good life being a Robin. But boy wonder isn't Batman.